term limits. What are your thoughts on our current term limits and their ability to keep long-term thinkers in City Hall before they are term limits? I think term limits have become a very serious issue in this community, and I would move to relax them. I think the most important thing we can do as, as taxpayers is to vote people in office with the kind of integrity and the kind of accountability and transparency to the taxpayers and to the voters. I think that is going to be the most important thing we can do to assure our voters and our citizens that they can have faith and trust in government. And I would move to relax term limits. I think a combination of two three-year terms or a combination of two four-year terms would be something I'd consider, but I'd certainly look for citizen input. I know that the very best term limit is the ballot box. However, I also know that as a member of the council, you have to be able to hit the ground running. And that's why I'm running, because I believe I have the level and the depth of experience that it's going to take to be effective outpacing that. Term limits has its pros and cons. If you're not happy with your council person, well, you can vote them out in two years. That's the good part. But then again, it is way too short. There's a lot to learn. There's a lot to do. And many times, there's not that continuity between the outgoing and incoming uh, council people to keep projects going. And we need that continuity. We need people that can work together. And I think they should be extended to two, three year terms. In regards to term limits, certainly the way they're set up now, they're more of a hindrance than a help. Um, I do think they need to be relaxed. I've seen a lot of times where there's a, an individual that gets elected into office down there and they haven't worked down there, they haven't seen the process and they're hit with the budget right away and once they get through that they're trying to figure their way around and then they're up for re-election again. If they don't get re-elected, re that's when things fall through the cracks and when you talk about hit the ground running, I think I'm going to hit the ground running and running fast, running hard and I'll be there each and every day for y'all. I understand the process, and I think that's what's all Years alone. Yeah, I agree that term limits should be relaxed for two reasons. Number one, it diminishes your talent pool in terms of people that want to serve in public service. And number two, most of the problems that we have with the city are chronic, and, they, and they're, they're long-term solutions. And it's very difficult to do that in two years. You're elected in one year. The next year, you're out trying to raise funds for uh, get campaign contributions for your next election. So I think it's a hindrance. Uh, I'm not going to commit to what the extension should be. Uh, most people are talking about two four-year terms, but I think the other thing's more. Okay, next question. District 8 has been seeing a lot of development, um, a lot of hills being leveled and trees being removed as part of the development. Do you have any changes you would propose to protect the natural beauty of the environment in District 8? I'm against any developer going in and just clear-cutting land. We need to protect our trees, and we have we have this tree ordinance that needs to be enforced. Building codes need, need to be enforced. And we need to really be careful about all the development coming in. There needs to be a balance there. Like we said earlier, our, our city is growing and we're getting a large amount of people that want to make their homes here in San Antonio. But developers need to be responsible and take care of our trees and follow uh, the codes and the ordinance. Certainly when you talk about development, there's an article in today's uh, Metro, the bottom, Jaime Castillo wrote about it, and he was talking about developers, they sidestep the local government, they go up to Austin to get things that they want, and certainly out in my area, the north end of the district, there's been a lot of clear cutting, but not just clear cutting, cutting into the geology. And once you do that, you can't change it, you can't go back and put it back there. And certainly I want to work hard. I want to bridge the gap between developers and citizens. I want to make sure that the zoning commission, the planning commission, that citizens have an input on that. And I want developers to start developing in a responsible fashion out in the north end of the district. And city has revenues. Yeah, I would agree that uh, development uh, needs to take care of our environmental concerns. And I think there needs to be a better coexistence between the development community and the citizens of San Antonio. Uh, what, I, what I recognize from serving on the Zoning Commission is that there is always, uh, in a lot of respects, an adversarial relationship, and I think that needs to change. And I also think there needs to be 
a uh, fresh look at the Unified Development Code so that if there is a violation of the law, that law needs to be enforced, but it needs to be enforced in a way that it punishes the developer who may cut down trees. Um, and sometimes they can figure out that if they cut the trees down, the, the, the uh, crime doesn't fit the punishment. In other words, it's cheaper for them to just cut all the trees down. So those are the things we need to look at. Completed fellowship, the big developers aren't supporting me. I'm supported by real neighbors and real families. And I'll tell you, I think we have a lot more power over our development than we are taking. You know, the city of San Antonio, your council member appoints the zoning commissioner, the planning commissioner, to CPS and to SAWS, and all the developers go to get their permits to those entities. I think we need to stand tough and protect our trees. You know, in my, in my very neighborhood, we have a, a land right next to us, and we're very worried about this issue, and I want to do something about it. We go into the bond, and the streets are associated with the work of the bond. How would you address the traffic issues in our district? Well, certainly uh, that's a big issue when I'm out and about knocking on doors and visiting with residents. And I'm telling folks, we're going to have to come to an agreement. We're going to have to start looking at options, uh, really, folks, uh, if we want to progress forward in a responsible fashion. Um, again, I'm talking about HOV lanes. I'm talking about exploring light rail again, progressive carpooling. Other Texas cities, and not only Texas cities, but other cities around the country are embracing these options and are moving forward in a positive fashion with clean air. And that's a quality of life issue, and I take that very seriously. Um, when you're looking around the district, I live at the top part. When I drive into downtown, I'll get off and I'll take alternate routes through the district. And all I see is traffic coming out of all the neighborhoods. It's because of our population move. The longer we wait to start looking at options to come to an agreement and invest in large transportation and infrastructure projects, the cost is going to go up. And so there's a the controversial toll roads out there. I'm not a proponent of that, but it is an option. Uh, there's a BRT, the bus rapid transit, that VIA is, is pushing, and they're going to groundbreak on that this next year. It's going to come right into District 8. It's clean air. But certainly we have to start looking at options, and I'm all for that. Our well, top campaign priority is infrastructure, and the fact that we need to look at a 20 to 25 year uh, infrastructure plan for the city that has not been done. Uh, we usually look at infrastructure over five year increments, and we need to do something different in order to solve our transportation problems. Those problems will not take care of themselves overnight. But I do think we need to look at a multimodal transportation system for the city of San Antonio, and I think that will help to alleviate some of our traffic concerns. Well, howdy, my name is Jacob Dell. I apologize for being late. I was another event in Kangoo. You know, I think one of the issues with traffic, everybody talks about we need more roads, wider roads, and so forth. And I think if you look at some of the data, you'll find that it's really about our intersections first and then expanding later on down the road. In other words, we don't need wider and wider lanes. We need to make sure that the intersections are adequately handled. As far as the bond goes, I think that was part of the question with what is that doing. I think that the bond is a fair go at it because about 83%, in my opinion, is for infrastructure improvements. The rest of it is for something else. And so I think that's a good start to fixing some of the problems. Moving back to traffic, I think that you know we really need to look at an advanced systemic solution for traffic, a comprehensive plan that really is short, mid, and long range. We need to look at east and west arteries. And we need to look at density and how it affects traffic. One of the things that I oppose, there's a three-story apartment complex next to Jade Oaks by Oakland Estates that that's, was being proposed that's going to put 600 new cars into the road. Our roads, our infrastructure, our streets, we can no longer maintain this kind of density. Traffic, as far as traffic, um, infrastructure needs and all those things will take years. We need some immediate solutions. And, for example, I don't have to fight the rush hour anymore because I'm retired, but if I leave my house at 745, I'm stuck on Days of Olive for like 30 minutes before I can get to I-10 when it should take me just three minutes. And if I leave at 830, I can get just about anywhere in 30 minutes with no problem. I think that the big companies should really consider having staggered uh, starting times for their employees. And then we can take some um, um, cars off the road by using technology and, and uh, working out of the home through teleconferencing.